Hi, I'm Andrew Doig, and if you're like me, and I know that I am, then you enjoy exploring the mountains in winter. Sometimes, that means bringing a lot of equipment with you. And I'm forced to buy a lot of it used, which means sometimes I have to make some modifications. Today, we're going to take an old pair of crampons and make some anti-balling plates to keep the snow from collecting on the underside of them while you're climbing in wet or slightly warm conditions. The consumables for this project are a bag of zip ties and a Fisker's brand craft cutting mat for use with X-Acto knives, both of which I picked up for under 15 bucks at Walmart. Supplies I already had are a straight edge, a sharpie marker, and a good pair of scissors. Uh, as well as this soldering iron, which I'll be using to burn holes in this uh, durable plastic for the zip ties. Uh, you may not have one of these as a gas-powered soldering iron. You might have an electric one, or if you don't have one at all, you could also use a good X-Acto knife and some care with a block underneath to cut through, too. You may notice that the table got messier, but I did test everything on uh, one crampon, so I can show you how well it works with this other one. Uh, first step is going to be to lay the crampon down onto the mat, and we're going to trace out the interior lines with our sharpie and try to get it as close to the rails as possible so that we get a nice close fit between the plate and the rails and no snow or ice can form in between the two. And on these bigger parts, I can't really fit the pen in there to do a good trace job, so I'm just bringing the pen to the outside of the, of the cramp on and angling it in a little bit, trying to get the lines that I need. Lines. Now we're going to take our scissors and cut out that shape that we traced. Okay. Now we're going to take the cramp on, lay it inside, see what the fit looks like. Take a little bit off this side here, bringing those corners. a nice close fit. Very little room on other side for snow and ice to get into. So we're going to want to put holes for the zip ties to connect the rail and the plate. And I have an example in the other room. This is the one I made earlier. You can see it still melts properly to the boot. And it's got a pattern that works well to hold the plate in nice and tight. Got a few extra holes, which is why I wanted to bring this as an example. You might find yourself with a little bit of trial and error too for your particular model. of this belt the melting plastic is really not good for you to breathe so I have to go do it outside and uh, there's not enough light there to film basically I just turn this on heat it up and then press it through the plastic to make these holes now if you don't have one of these again you can use a razor blade or an awl or something in order to make those cuts okay I've melted the holes in the plastic with that soldering iron 
And now I'm gonna use a razor blade just to scrape and clean the plastic that's melted and, and made little ridges around each hole. Actually see that you get a really nice punch. Last step is to take your zip ties and zip tie your plate to the rails of your crampon. If you take a look at this one here, you'll see that the way I attach the, uh, the zip ties was so that the locking lugs are on the outside of the frame, not on the top not on the bottom, so that snow won't get caught on them, and so they don't impede the boot sitting flat on the rail, so that they don't impede it as much as possible. Alright, looks kind of like a hedgehog porcupine pinhead nightmare, but with a little bit strategic tightening. snips. They make quick work of uh, zip tie-ins. You can also use them to tighten down every last bit of the zip tie if you grab and turn like that. That's it. Your crampons ready for uh, Wet, sticky snow, 15 bucks, about hour and a half of work.